If you're building NestJS microservices, you know that managing multiple services efficiently is a game changer. That's why we're migrating from Turbo Repo to NX. Hey everyone, welcome back to Sakurative channel and this is the episode 4 of our NestJS microservices course. In this episode, we are going to set up a mono repo with multiple NestJS microservices using NX and explore how its features make our development process faster and more organized. And here's the best part. In the next episode, we are going to implement gRPC communication between our microservices using NX built-in features. This will allow us to create high-performance, scalable and type-safe service-to-service -service communication. Actually, NX simplifies adding gRPC and managing microservices by providing tools for caching and optimized builds. So this makes the development process much smoother. So make sure to stick around and hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss the upcoming content. All right, let's jump right into it. Before we dive into building our model repo, let's talk about what NX is and why we're switching from Turbo Repo for our NestJS microservices. NX is a powerful mono repo tool designed to manage and scale full stack applications, including backend microservices with NestJS. It offers advanced caching, dependency tracking, and built in generators that streamline the development and deployment process. So now you might be wondering why not just use Turbo Repo? Turbo Repo is fast and excellent at caching and task orchestration, which makes it super popular for front end frameworks like Next.js, React, and Vue. However, here's the catch Turbo Repo is primarily designed for front end mono repos. It doesn't have built in support for Next.js microservices or back end architectures. This means that if you want to build a Next.js microservices architecture with Turbo Repo, you'll have to manually configure service dependencies and handle environment management on your own. So while Turbo Repo is a great tool for front-end development, it's not ideal for back-end focused mono repos. Now let's talk about NX and why it's a better choice for NestJS microservices. Unlike Turbo Repo, NX isn't just a task runner. It's a full-fledged mono repo management tool that supports both front-end and back-end projects out of the box. Here's why NX is a game changer for NestJS microservices. Built-in NestJS support. NX has built in generators for creating services, modules, and controllers. With Turbo Repo, on the other hand, you have to set up everything manually. Task orchestration and dependency tracking. NX automatically tracks dependencies and run only the necessary tasks, while Turbo Repo lacks built-in dependency tracking. Better CI/CD integration. NX helps automate deployments by running effective builds and tests. Turbo Repo requires manual setup for this. And finally, NX simplifies working with gRPC, Kafka, and Redis, which makes it a better choice for microservices. So, while Turbo Repo is a great tool for front end projects, NX is built with full stack mono repos in mind. It makes it easier to structure NestJS microservices, optimize build performance, and helps us implement various communication styles between our microservices like gRPC more efficiently. So from now on, we're switching to NX for our NestJS microservices course. Now, let's get started by setting up our first mono repo with NX. All right, now that we know why NX is a better choice for NestJS microservices, let's set up our mono repo and create our microservices. So first, we need to install NX globally. So in order to do that, I'm going to say npm i dash g nx all right it's done and now we're going to use npx create dash nx dash workspace at latest and then set a name for our workspace here i'm going to just name it nestjs dash microservices and by the workspace here i mean mono repo okay so we're going to create a mono repo named nestjs microservices and here it asks which stack we want to use we can choose between React, Vue, Angular, Node, and also other frameworks and languages. All right, so the available options are not limited to these four options here. So we select the none here. Later on in this video, we're gonna configure the mono repo 
for our NestJS microservices. Next, we are going to use Prettier for code formatting, and then it asks which CI provider we want to use. We're gonna use GitHub Actions here, which actually allows you to automate workflows such as building, testing, and deploying application whenever the code is pushed. Okay, so I use GitHub Actions here because it's free and is well integrated with our GitHub repo. Later in this course, we will see how we can set up a CI CD pipeline with GitHub Actions. All right, it's done. And now let's open up the model repo in the code editor. So first, let me close this up and then go to the nestjs dash microservices. Okay, and then open it up in VS Code. All right, now that we've created our NX workspace, let's quickly take a look at the file and folder structure inside this model repo. As you can see, NX has generated several files and directories for us but I don't want to make things complicated right now. I know there's a lot here, and if you're new to Annex, it might seem overwhelming. But don't worry, we're not going to dive deep into every single file just yet. Instead, we are going to stay focused on what really matters, which is creating multiple NestJS microservices inside this monorepo. So here we are going to create multiple NestJS microservices, how to test them, build them, and run them inside this monorepo. As we progress through this series, we will come back to these files and explain them in more details. But for now, let's keep it simple. All right, let's start by generating our first microservice. I open up the terminal here, and for creating a NestJS project, we are going to use NX Generator. So what is a generator? Well, actually, NX Generators allows us to quickly scaffold NestJS applications and even specific features without having to manually set up everything. This makes development faster and more efficient. So instead of manually creating files and setting up configurations, NX Generators do it for us. So for example, with just a single command, we can generate a new NestJS project or create a new module or controller or create reusable libraries for shared logics. So now I'm gonna show you how we can create a NestJS project with these generators. In order to use them, we're gonna use NX and then G or generate, and then we need to put the name of the plugin that we are going to use. So for working with the NestJS project, we're gonna use NX slash Nest plugin and then clone. And after that, we need to put the name of the generators. So since we are going to create an application, we're gonna just use app or application. It will create an entire NestJS application for us. And then we just need to put the name of the application. It is going to be inside the apps directory. And then I'm gonna name it API Gateway. Okay, if I run this command, you can see it says unable to resolve NX Nest clone app. This means that we need to add this plugin first and then run its generators. So in order to add the NX slash Nest plugin, we're gonna say NX add and then put the name of the plugin, which is at NX slash Nest, all right? Okay, it's done. And now we can run the previous command to generate a NestJS application. So let me close this up first and then run the previous command nxg at nx slash nest, which is the name of the plugin, and then clone app, which is the name of the generators. It means that we are going to create a NestJS application, and then this is the path and name of the application inside our model repo. So let's run this, and here it asks which linter we want to use. I just go with the ESLint and select it just as the test runner. All right, it's done. And now as you can see, it creates an apps directory here. And inside it, we have two directory. The first one is the API gateway, which contains the NestJS project inside it. We have the SRC directory and inside the SRC, you can see we have the main.ts file, which is actually the entry point of our NestJS application. And then we have the app module here. Inside it, we have the app controller and app service and also the app module file. Okay, so this is the first NestJS application that we have added to this model repo. And this is the end-to-end -end test that we can use to write end-to-end -end test for this API gateway project. Okay, so now if I go to the nx.json here, you can see we have some plugins here and each plugin has some target. So here, for example, we have the build target. Its target name is just build and it runs the build task for our monorepo. Next here in the webpack plugin, you can see we have three targets. The first one is the build target, which builds our NestJS applications. The serve target, which actually runs the NestJS project. Then we have the pre 
through your target, which allows us to see the effect of the builds, deployment, and configuration changes before committing into the final action. And it actually allows us to test and review the result. But the most important target here is the build answer. So these are from the Webpack plugin. Then we have the ESLint plugin, which has a target name Lint. And also we have the Jest plugin, which has a target name Test. Okay, so if I go to the API Gateway package.json file, you can see here we have the targets. The first one is build, which actually runs this command. The next is serve. It is for running the application. It has some configuration inside it. I will talk about them later in this course. And also we have the test here. Okay. And if I get back to the server, you can see it has a depends on array, which is set to build. This means that when we run this serve target, it first run the build target and then run the application. All right. So now let me just run the application with the help of these targets. Let me clear this up. And in order to do that, I'm going to say annex. And then we need to put the target name, which is going to be serve. As I said, it will actually build and run the application. And then we need to put the name of the application that we are going to run. So it is going to be API gateway. Okay. The build is done. And as you can see, finally, it runs the application on the port 3000. Okay. So as you can see, our Nest.js application is up and running. Now let me add another Nest.js application to our monorepo. So let me close this up first and run the previous command for generating a Nest.js application, nxg at nx slash nest, and then clone app, and then put the name of the application. This time, let me add a products microservice. Let's just name it products here. And let's run this. Use the ESLint and just for the test. Okay, so as you can see, it immediately creates the application and that is because of the powerful caching system of the Annex. So we don't need to wait for it to download all the files for creating the second Nest.js application. Now let me get back to the apps directory. As you can see, now we have the products directory here, which contains the second Nest.js application. And also we have the products E2E, which is for end-to-end -end testings against the products microservice here. Okay, now let me go to the main.ts file of the second application and just run the application on port 301. Okay, so we don't have the conflict between the first application, which is the API gateway, and the second one, which is the products here. Okay, now we can run the application. Let me clear this up first. So NX serve and let's put the name of the second application, which is product. Okay, let's run that. All right, the application is running on the port 301. Now, how we can run all the application inside the monorepo? In order to do that, I'm going to say NX and then run dash many and then dash T, which is for specifying the target name. It is going to be serve and then dash dash O, which means that we are going to serve all the applications inside the monorepo. So let's run that. You can see. The first one is running on port 301 and the second one is running on port 3000. All right. So we can also run another targets here. Let me clear this up and let's build the application and X build and put the name of the application products. For example, let's run that. You can see it successfully ran the target build for the project Nessus microservices slash products. Now let's run the test target for the products application. Now you can see the tests are passed and we are successful around the target test for the project Nestjs microservices slash product. So yeah, with the generators, we can create projects or configurations or create a single file in our model repo. And with the executors, we can run some actions in our model repo. And each action here has a target name, for example, serve, build, or test, as you have seen in this video. So in this video, we have created a model repo with NX with two Nestjs application in Inside it. And in the next video, we are going to implement a gRPC communication channel between our microservices and you will see how the features of NX streamline the process of implementing the gRPC and creating the types file based on the profile in our gRPC framework. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell in order to get informed about the upcoming episode of this video. Also, if this video was helpful, please hit the like button and feel free to share it with your friends and colleagues.
Thanks for your support and stay tuned for the next video. Have a nice time. Bye-bye.